wish one night and I don't care I'm still gonna sit right here If I wait for tomorrow it might not come So I'll do my living for a day is done Time don't waste when you don't care there's never enough, don't put it off Oh, I can't afford to procrastinate If I wait for tomorrow, it'll be too late So don't sell me no green bananas Don't sell me no, no green bananas No, no It's a little insane and a little profound And it all depends on your part of town In a hospital room where one is born Another one be laying down The young man lives like it don't matter It's a high-pressed hook and ladder Oh, this world's on fire, I'm getting out Cause tomorrow may not matter So don't sell me no green bananas Don't sell me no, no green bananas No, 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 no green bananas Please, please, please Well, you see, this song's about a friend of mine's daddy who lives down in South Louisiana. And not too long ago, he celebrated his 99th birthday. Come on, let's have a shout out for all the 99-year-olds riding motorcycles in Sturgis. You know what I'm talking about. And not too long ago, after he celebrated his birthday, not too long before that, my friend's daddy was in the grocery store shopping. That's right, a 98-year-old shopping in the grocery store. That's a sight to behold. He was there in the produce section, wanted to buy some bananas. He went up to a little girl working there and said, Maya, would you help me pick out some bananas? She said, yes, sir, I'd be glad to. She ran over, grabbed a big old bunch of green bananas and brought them back to him and said, here you go, sir. You take these home, and in a couple of days, they'll be just fine. My friend's daddy started shaking his head and said, I'm sorry, hon, these bananas ain't going to work. She said, why not, sir? They're fine. In a couple of days, they'll wrap it up. They'll be just fine. He said, well, baby, it's like this. I'm 98 years old. I might not be here in a couple of days. <laughs> That's a true story. So I don't know how you've been living your life, whether you've been sitting around waiting for everything to get just right or get just right before you start enjoying it. But let me tell you what I found in the Bible over in Psalm 118, a little verse that goes like this. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will be glad and rejoice in and rejoice in. So I don't know about you, but I'm subscribing to the doctrine of green bananas. So now you know this song's about a 99-year-old man. You'll understand the last verse. It don't go something like this. It goes exactly like this. Water boiling in the pot Three minute eggs take way too long And I hear when breakfast is done Well it means that I've already gone Mashed potatoes hurt my teeth And I ain't as old as I used to be Oh, just one more step towards the door And I hit eternity So don't sell me no green bananas Don't sell me no, no green bananas No, no No, no, no green bananas Help me out, help me out. Don't 
sell me no. Don't sell me no. A little more enthusiasm. Try, try one more time. Don't sell me no. fellowship and uh, it's great to be around uh, the different gifts of the body like Jimmy and uh, don't you appreciate his irreverent attitude you know I mean the guy is called reverend and he and he hardly acts like it you know what I'm saying I mean how many know what I, that's kind of like an oxymoron it's like military intelligence words that don't seem to go together you know like jumbo shrimp like how does that work you know it's kind of, and when you think of Jimmy you don't think of religion negatively you think of relationship with, with the Lord. Amen? Amen? So it's fun to hear you. Oh, and he's not only anointed, he actually is good. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of anointed people that aren't very good. You know what I'm saying? And God kind of covers and we live with it, okay? But then, but then you get around this kind of a gift and not only is there an anointing, but there is a skillfulness in the hand that he has, that he has paid a price for. And, uh, oh, I just love listening to that. Heaven's going to be awesome because it's going to be filled with that kind of stuff, as we know, isn't it? So thank you for being here, Jimmy and Sherry. Thank you for being here. And, and uh, their lives are, are quite something. They just were sharing with me and I, uh, just all that's gone on in the last year, I guess, and redemption, the redemption of what Jesus is doing. God's the God of re. He's a re-God. He restores. He redeems. He, he just refuses to lose, so he rees. Seriously, he doesn't like to lose, so he goes around reing. Restarting, renewing, reforming the Reformation. Re, re. He's the God of re. And uh, we all know that because on the third day, he resurrected. Come on, somebody, amen. That's what the Bible says, he resurrected. So God is the God of re. That's a song right there somewhere. Um, he's the God of re. He restores, he renews, he redeems. Um, there's way more words than that that 
that we, that we could come up with. If I hadn't, if I developed this enough, there's probably 30 reads that we could refer to through Scripture where God just, he just, he just, he doesn't start over. He tried with a couple of guys. He tried with Moses. He says, let me just kill him and start with you. Remember when the Lord got mad at the, the Israelites and he says, could I just start again with you? And Moses said, no, that would not be a good idea. And so God pulled back and just read. He renewed. And so that, the good news is, is that nobody's junk and nobody's beyond hope. And no situation is irredeemable. But we serve the God who reads, reads everything. Amen? Amen. And so we thank you, Jesus, for this good news, this good news of the gospel. When I think of uh, gifts like uh, Jimmy, and I know that he didn't know the Lord early. He, he knew the Lord later in life. And before that, he, he experienced a lot of different things. And so you could call him the prodigal that came home. And I think we think there's two options. You can either be a colorful sinner or a vanilla saint. (laughs) Like, why do we think there's only two options? Because, you see, my testimony is absolutely different than his. Like, I I, I was raised in a godly home. It it was a divorced home by the age of 16 uh, because my dad loved the Lord, but he just had some issues and and addictions in his life and... uh, and so my, my family was divorced, but, but I found God early. I found him when I was, and this is going to sound weird, but of six. I was six when I experienced the Lord. And I'm now years old, okay? That, <laughs> that would be 52, okay? So now, now I'm 52, and when I was six, I'll never forget receiving the Lord. And the Sunday school teacher said, does anybody here want to receive Jesus in my arm? Shut up like styrofoam underwater. I'll never forget it. My hand just shot up. Because my spirit says, "Uh uh-huh. There's something right about this invitation. And right there, at six, at six I received the Lord. And I went back to my dinky toys, but it was six. Because I know some of you are thinking, well, at six, what do you know? Well, what six-year-olds know? Which is why I went back to my dinky toys. But I was a saved six-year-old. And then my grandfather ruined me by giving me a chart with scriptures on it when I was eight. You know that story, many of you who know me. And at eight years of age, he gave me a great big chart with scriptures. And he said, if you'll memorize them, I'll get you a bike. God had spoken. (laughs) I never got the bike. There were over 200 scriptures on the poster. (laughs) Thanks a lot, Grandpa. (laughs) Messed me up. For good, though. For good. For good. So here's these scriptures on the wall, and and I'm beginning to memorize them and internalize the Word of God. Now I'm eight. By the time I'm 12, I was loving God and wanting more of God. And and I'll never forget my pastor. the, The pastor of our church said, If anybody here wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit, meet me in the chapel. And it was downstairs. So I headed off to the chapel. I'll never forget going down the corridor. My mom went with me. Dad wasn't around much. Mom was there. And I went in there. And the carpet was blood red. It was just a deep crimson red. And I got on my knees and I began to, I, I, I began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave me utterance. I was 12. I'll never forget. It was like silicone on my lips. I remember leaving the chapel and going up into the balcony of our church, just speaking in tongues. As I began, I was bilingual. Come on, somebody. I had another language. I had three languages. English, Canadian. I'm a Canadian. We all know how to spell Canada. C-A-N-A-D-A. A? Okay. And I, and I just, and I just I, I'll never forget, I'm 12, and I, I'm just walking, and silicone is coming out of my mouth. It's kind of like WD-40 on my tongue as I'm just speaking in a heavenly language. And my spirit man, 12, 12, just a 12-year-old. Because around 12, that's how your voice sounds. Hi, you want to go on a date? You know, I mean, that's just, just what happened. 12 years of age, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. 14, my bedroom became a Bible college. 
And I spent two hours a day, every day with Jesus in my bedroom for a two and a half year period. That's why I'm like this. It'll mess you up for good. I wrote a book on it called Bedroom Bible College. You know that. Somebody said, why are you rehearsing your testimony? Well, because it's one of the re's. We get to review. My life isn't like Jimmy's. But why is it that we have a kindred spirit? Why is it that we have a kindred spirit? See, I never did drugs. He did drugs. My only problem was I was drugged to church. Come on. So that's a, I guess that's a drug problem. So I never did drugs, those drugs. I just did the drug to church. But I never felt drugged because I was so in love with Jesus. Why do we think there's two options? You're either a prodigal, colorful sinner or a vanilla saint. 14, 16, 17, 18, 18. I mean, I never turned, I never gave one teenage day to the devil. Somebody going, you must be boring. Absolutely not. (laughs) Bring it on. I refuse to let a sinner have more fun with their sin than I'm having with my salvation. So as you can tell, there's not a religious spirit here. Our spirits relate even though I'm the good boy who grew up in the house of God. Because I think we think there's two choices. Colorful sinner, marginalized elder brother. Because you know the story. The colorful sinner went out and lived and and, and partied and and, and just and basically went into debt. Which is a whole other sermon. And he came to himself and his father ran towards him. It's the story of God running towards a prodigal. Meanwhile, back at home is Mr. Marginalized Religious Elder Brother, who's just a little bothered that a party has been thrown for loser. And what does dad say? Dad says, oh, son, why do, you, why do you have a problem with the party we're throwing for your younger, elder, your younger brother when in fact you, come on somebody, you could have experienced this same joy and celebration. Why is it that when we come to Christ, we lose our joy often among Christians? We're staying out at Elkhorn Ridge. I mean, it's a nice campground just down the road here. You know, we're my father-in-law and I are together and and we're having a great time. I'm in a tent. We're we're in amongst $1.5 million Prevo uh, rolling coaches. It's it's quite something. And on the way to the restroom this morning, I told a guy following me, I've enjoyed listening uh, party people right behind us. (laughs) Party, party, people. But, but, and I'm in bed at 11, and they're just getting back from wherever they were, and there goes the fires and the noise. And I just let the guy know, you know, you, you guys just are having a great time. Now, now, I didn't share Jesus with him. I don't share Jesus with everyone I meet, but I do share Jesus with people I meet. And uh, I often do it on airplanes because nobody can leave. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful environment. We're, we're five miles closer. Maybe that's what it is. They, they just feel a little tension. So it's just, it works, it works. And um, matter of fact, the other day I got an email from a grandmother who says, I don't know what you did on the airplane with my 14-year-old grandson, but his life has been changed, and we need to find out what you said. That's what happened just recently because the preacher is not just a preacher. He wants to be a witness. And um, can I give you the context of that? I had just gotten up to United Airlines and I was three minutes late from bringing my bags to them for their cutoff was one hour before the flight left. And they said, you're late. And I says, what are you talking about? I can't. I mean the lady went into anal, 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 letter of the law. Come on, woman, do you have any spirit? Do you have any spirit? Do you have any life? 
Oh, I was so ticked I even made a video of the moment so I could use it against United Airlines. And you know what? She cost me $1,000 because I had to get to the next place so I could preach. And she, because of her analness, would not allow me to get on a flight that we watched sit there for 45 (laughs) minutes before it took off. I was one ticked off preacher, I'll tell you right now. I was so mad at them. Thank God for Southwest Airlines. They came through, were able to get us there, but it cost us dearly. That was the context of which I then got on the airplane to share my faith. (laughs) And that's often how God does it with me. He'll just put me in a hellish condition and then say, a witness. And he just tells me to witness. And so I could have had, I had every opportunity to just be ticked. But man, thank you, Jesus, for renewal, for review, for restart. This 14-year-old boy, I could just tell he was a little nervous. Never been on a plane before. He was carrying a stuffed animal. Yeah, yeah, issues. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you're carrying a stuffed animal and you have no problem with it, there's probably some situations. That's right. And you know what? My heart just reached out to this young man. I was able to share with him the message of the gospel, which is good news. And to get that envelope or the, sorry, that email from the lady saying, what, what is it that you said because God did something through... Through, through that. I have no clue where I was before I shared this testimony right now, but uh, let's move. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Prodigal son. Hey, I, I'm, I am not the marginalized elder brother. There's another option, and you all know what it is. We believe that, and I'm preaching to the choir, and you've heard me before. Why do we think that you can either be a colorful sinner or a vanilla saint? How about God at 12? The testimony of finding God early, but not losing your edge. Amen? And so I declare in Jesus' name that, can I say this over your kids, that every one of your kids, grandkids, extended family, will never return to the Lord because they're never leaving. In Jesus' name. But they won't be vanilla. And this is not... A race moment. This isn't about skin color. This is about, well, you need other ingredients to give you any life. That's Vanilla usually needs help. You just don't, you put something on vanilla to give it content life. And so I declare in Jesus' name that there's no vanilla in the crowd. If vanilla means bland. But that every one of your children will come under the Spirit of their bedrooms become a Bible college, is their walk with God a delight in the name of Jesus. Amen. When I come to believers, I get to just throw up like this because you allow me to. Doesn't mean I don't have preparation and, and all that kind of stuff. Although preparation can sometimes get you in trouble, there is a place for take no thought for what you shall say. For in that hour, I will, I will give you the words to say. Amen. But I'm going to share with this, this, and we'll move quickly here because it doesn't have to be everlasting to be eternal. <laughs> Amen. And you're so gracious because I know some of you have heard me say things like that before. You're just so gracious and it's, uh, it's life. By the way, since I was with you last, my family has increased. I now have a five-month-old son. His Woo! name is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's happening to me too. Um, I'm 52. He's five months old. Let's pray. (laughs) For me. Okay, let's just pray right now. Help. Help. Amen. But you know, my passion is younger lives, so God's just keeping me in the game. I mean, seriously, it's almost a joke. The Lord, I mean, it's fun. I think the Lord's having fun with me. My wife and I I married at 40, as many of you know, got married later in life because God told me that would happen. And uh, 49 is when we had our first child, uh, Gabrielle Buttercup Johnson. And she's just phenomenal. And so are your children and so are mine and so are all children. They're just 
phenomenal. They're just made in God. It's just awesome. And my daughter's growing up in the fear of the Lord and, 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 and dad. And so it's, it's, just a, it's just a good thing. She's precious, Gabrielle Buttercup Johnson. Now she's got Judah, her brother. And uh, she's already uh, loving on him and, and uh, a little jealous at times, but she's loving on him. And we're going we're gonna to train these, these kids up in the way of the Lord. And uh, J12, our ministry is just continuing to grow, develop. We have more products for churches than we've ever had before. And uh, our staff is increasing. Our responsibilities are increasing. And so things are going awesome. Things are going awesome. But now eh, I'm going to share with you something that's been fresh on my spirit in the last cu- couple of months here as it relates to this call to go into all the world. And I may have shared this before. I have no clue. So if I did, uh, just receive it as fresh bread. Because I have no clue. But, but, but when Jesus called us uh, to go into all the world, and, I, and I'm sharing that in the context of what's going on that way in this city right now. And I'm looking forward to being salt and light, tasty and bright. Anybody going to join me? Okay. Whenever you share Jesus, please smile. We'll pay for the stitches. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> I mean, re- remind your face of the message. It's a good word. It's a good word. Okay. Jesus is the answer. And it don't matter what the question is. He's the answer. But in Scripture, we have five ways that Jesus called us to go. Five times the Great Commission is given. Did you know that? I think you knew that. There's four Gospels. Why are there four Gospels? Because there's probably at least four ways of looking at the same wonderful thing. Which will keep you from being religious when you realize there's another way of looking at what you're looking at. A point of view is a view from a point. The first one is Matthew. In Matthew, Jesus said, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. Could we just say all things? All things. Isn't that cool? Jesus said, Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you, which means that no things are culturally restrictive in the sense where, well, you don't wear your hair this way, so you can't know Jesus. Or you don't do it this way culturally so you can't know Christ. Here's the word. The gospel works in Bikerville as well as it works in Sykerville. Or wherever you may be. Jesus then said, all authority has been given unto me. Go ye therefore into all the world. And lo, I am with you. Because when you go lo, I am with you. I don't know about you, but I'm just loving the fact that he said, go! And then he says, oh, by the way, lo, I am with you. I call it the Presence Commission. You think you feel God in here? You do. But do you want to feel him even thicker? Head to Main Street. Head to Lazare. Walk around and open your mouth and share the presence, the, the, the message of Jesus. Now, there's many ways to evangelize. Proclamation evangelism, friendship evangelism, presence evangelism. There's many ways to share your faith. But here's the word. The word is, you'll feel him thicker on the other side of go. You will feel him with you. Whenever I go, lo, I am with you. The second one is found in Mark. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, which is why we have youth ministry. Creature. Okay. (laughs) He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Come on. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, which could very well happen this week, if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Boy, this sounds like a rally, rally. I mean, no, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a market out there. Here's, here's what I get out of that. Go, and if you drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt you. It's the protection commission. God will protect you. In other words, you're covered. Whenever you go, There's an insurance policy on your life. And even if you die, you win. 
Some would say, oh, I can't go. I might not be protected. Well, we need to use wisdom. But at the same time, there is a protection clause over your life. Amen? Amen. So when we go, it's God's witness protection program. Number three, I'm moving quick. And thus it was written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. This is the Lord speaking. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. The first one would be the presence commission. He's with you. He's just with you. And the second one is like protection. And some are saying, why are you putting him in peas? Why are you alliterating? Well, because I'm an evangelical. The other reason I'm alliterating is because it'll help you remember it. It's a promise. It's a promise. This one's called the power commission. God says, if you'll stay, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. If you'll hang, I'll hook you up. But he requires some tearing for a hookup. And as we, as we tarry in, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak into our lives, as we spend time with Jesus every day, like I challenge tweeners all over the world to give God 12 minutes a day, that as you give God time and you stay in his presence, there comes a, a, a plug-in, a hookup. It's called tailgating with Jesus. If you will tarry, I will hook you up. And you will have power. I was listening to uh, messages, all kinds of messages, because I brought my bike here and, 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 you know, it's 1,300 miles in my Harley truck alone with Jesus. And, uh, and I listened to a lot of teaching series and ministers, and, and I was listening to some of the stuff from, uh, from Bethel there with Bill Johnson. And do you know that they have numerous testimonies of miracles happening in their, in their world? Like when they go and feed children in Mozambique and they start handing out bread and it never quits. How many know that's insulting to the intelligence? That's insulting to the mind. But how many know it's freeing at another level? Amen. When they got into the boat and they says, oh, we don't have any bread. We don't have bread. We do not have bread. And Jesus says, um, uh, when, we, when, when you had five loaves and two fish, how many did we feed? 5,000. Uh, well, when you had 4,000, we had seven loaves. How many were left? Twelve baskets full. And he says, so what's the problem now? We don't have bread. You're wondering if we're going to starve. The Lord was basically saying to them, learn to hook up with miraculous power so that when we run into situations like this, you won't go to reason and blame it on the guy who didn't order the bread in time. How many are thankful that when Jesus said go, he says, if you'll hang, I'll hook you up. I love this one. It's the one in John. It's Jesus speaking again, and the Great Commission comes not like we usually hear it. Go and therefore and preach. It goes like this. If I will remain that he, or if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. That's the Lord speaking to Peter. Peter was looking at another guy, and the Lord told this guy what's going to happen, and and then he, Peter, you're going to, you're going to die this way, and Peter was offended kind of, and says, well, what about him? What about that guy? If I'm going to go this way, what about him? What did Jesus say? What's that to you? Was that to you? Could we say it that together? Let's say it that way. Was that to you? Come on, do it. Again. Was that to you? Okay, get your hands up. Was that to you? Amen. Come on, there's an anointing on this. Try it again. Was that to you? Come on, somebody. Amen. Jesus, the king of the universe, who we assume puts everybody in the same box, Because if you're a Christian, you'll look like this. If you're a Christian, you'll talk like that. If you're a Christian, your hair will look like that. And of course, I'm just a little jealous. He's actually got something to work with. 
Come on, I'm going to tell you right now. Jesus would say to you and to me, was that to you? That's my call on his life. Leave his call alone. Go get your own. In other words, the Great Commission is the personal commission. It isn't for everybody the same way. God's called Jimmy into a world that I will never be able to touch. And he does not want to touch my world. Come on, somebody. He doesn't want to be dealing with tweeners all the time. Amen. You heard the confession. So he, he, the Lord would say to me if I said, why can't I do that? The Lord would first of all say, you ain't skilled. Number two, he would say, was that to you? Mr. 52-year-old, you follow me to what I've called you to. It's freeing. Because all of a sudden, I don't have to compare myself with anybody else. Can we do it one more time? Was that to you? Amen. I feel receptivity. I feel we've received the word. And some of you, that's what you'll walk home with today. Because you see, the Great Commission isn't just go and do it the same, but go. But what's that to you? You follow me the way I've called you to. Amen? And so every one of us will know the call of God if we're open to it. And by the way, wherever he's called you is really where you want to be. I'm right. I'm right. You know I'm right. Because the devil says, oh, no, you don't want to go where God wants you to go because you don't want to go where he wants you to go. He'll put you where you don't fit. And God would say, I am not that ignorant of a leader, saith the Lord. I will put you where you fit. That doesn't mean your flesh will like it all the time. But then why would you follow your flesh anyway? Your flesh is boring compared to your spirit. Amen. You know, there's a $1.5 million prevos down where I'm at right now. And I guarantee, I guarantee you right now, there's some of them people that are having less fun than I am with my pickup truck. And my tent I bought at Walmart for $58. You know what? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm having more fun with my pup tent than he is with his flat screen that comes out of the bottom of his thing. And he gets a... That may not be the case. It may, he may be having just as much fun as me. As a matter of fact, he may be having more fun than me. And if he knows the Lord and he's a giver, the guy is living large. It's awesome. Because we serve a big God that can handle prevos. So I, 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 I celebrate that. I don't tolerate that. I celebrate it. I want one. Come on, somebody. <coughs> I could do a J-12 tour with one of those things. If anybody, just bring it on. Amen. I'm a 501c3 tax write-off. Come on, bring it on. The government has co covering for that. Although they have a lot of other issues. Here's the last one. Are you ready for the last one? Okay. It's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power. Could we say that? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's what it says. Do you know that Jesus spoke those words? And this is what it says after that. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched... He was taken up in a cloud and received out of their sight. Now catch this. These are his last words, period. This is it. And how many know your last words are probably your first concern? If today, I was to somehow be taken from this into the heavens. The last words out of my mouth would be, I love you to my family, my wife. Those would be the words. I love you. Those would be my words. 
And I'd want my mom to hear me. I'd want everybody on my family. I love you. Those would be the last words you would hear out of my mouth. Not, was my bike clean? <laughs> Did I get that new exhaust? No, it would be, I love you. Those would be my last words. These are his last words, and I'll read them one more time. It is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after those words were spoken. Now here's what he said. You shall receive power. If you're negative, you heard that as a command. But if you have Jesus in your heart in terms of relationship, you heard that as a promise. I promise you you shall receive power. What touches the Lord is faith. What turns him on is belief. That's what gets him going. When he feels faith in the house, he says, let me be God. When he senses we receive what he says is a promise instead of a prohibition or a command, that when he hears... When they received it as a promise. Let me meet that promise. And we end up with power. And I know we all want the power before we do what he says. Give me the power and I'll do it. God says, no, do it. I'll give you the power. Give me the power. I'll do it. And you all know I've said it before. Moses, Moses, stick your hand out there. Or I'll open the ocean. Moses says, no, I'll, you open the ocean. I'll stick my hand out there. <laughs> If, if, you'll, if you'll start opening that baby, I'll get involved. <laughs> Which just sucks the life right out of you, that whole mentality. Jesus says, no, 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 you get your hand out there and I'll open up the ocean. Because miracles begin with what we can do and they always end with what he can do. I can lay hands on somebody, but I can't heal them. I can open my mouth, but God can fill it. I can step out in faith. And he can respond. Amen? So I give you a promise. If you'll go, you shall receive power. It's a promise. How many receive that as a promise today? Amen? Don't receive it as a command. You get power. Come on, get some power. Power up. Amen? Amen? And the Lord would say, no, it's, don't, don't, don't take it that way. Take it this way. I promise you, you shall receive power. How many could use a renewing of your desire to share and be a witness for Christ? How many could use a renewing today? I, come on, that would... I, some of you are liars. You know, seriously, just because you know Jesus doesn't mean that you're at the peak of your heart for evangelism. And, and you know, sometimes we're, we've been in the way so long we're in the way. Just been in the way. I'm in the way, the way of Christ. And you're in the way because you've been in the way so long. You're, now you're in the way. You've, you've lost the energy of childlikeness. And so I declare in Jesus' name. That this week, wherever we go, even if you're not in, connected to the rally or exhibit halls or whatever, that in fact all of us would just be Great Commission Christians. That his last words are our first concern. That we would never graduate from being a witness. But we would be open to the Lord, Him using us. Amen. Father, we love you today. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of serving you and knowing you. And Lord, we thank you that every year we get to come and guys like Reverend Jimmy and myself get to come and, and just speak life into believers and others, Lord, that know you and love you. Lord, I just thank you for this body. I thank you for the story that continues to unfold in this body. And I thank you that you are the God who never gives up on us or it, but you are the God who restores and renews, re redeems. 
you buy back. You buy us back. We thank you, Jesus. How we love you today. Thank you, Father, for the presence. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the promise. Thank you for the protection that comes with the Father. Thank you that it's personal, Lord. We receive this today in the name of Jesus. As our heads are bowed, if you're here today and, and, and you're not right with the Lord, and I got, I got good news. I promise you, you can be made right just by acknowledging where you're at and he will meet you there. And if you'll come with an open heart, God will do surgery and you can be changed. I know we're a gathering of believers this morning, but if you're here today and you're not right with the Lord, at the count of three, I'm going to just ask you to raise your hand. And as your hand goes up, I'll look up and I'll see you. And we'll come into agreement right where you are. This is an invitation for anybody that would like to come into relationship with the Lord. Maybe for the first time, but maybe you need to return. If that's you. As our heads are bowed. Three is just a point of response. One, two, three. Raise your hand. Yes, sir. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? The man that raised his hand, just look up at me if you would. I come into agreement with you right now that today's a new day. In Jesus' name. And we're going to pray. Everyone just repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I've raised my hand in the midst of your people. Renew. Restore. I receive you today. As my Lord and Savior, thank you, Jesus, for paying the price. And Lord, we just take this moment, just soak in your presence and receive the spirit of this word today. In Jesus' name.